Hello everybody, good evening. Um, welcome to another class. We're going to be doing snowdrops and tulips. I've had um, an email today from one of you, lovely Donna, who's asked if we can show you how to do those because she wants to paint a card for a mum. So I planned on doing some tulips anyway in the next couple of weeks. I thought it would be a good one to recap. But let's have a look at snowdrops, which we won't have done before. And then any other requests, get them in the chat so that Andrew will feed them to me in my ear and we'll see what we can do. Um, just a little, a little um, moment. I thought it's quite poignant talking about, poignant talking about snowdrops because we had so much snow. And on our business park, the, uh, well, the people that are building, still building part of it, actually bought the JCB in and cleared the, the um, car park for us, which was amazing. But we've got a mound of snow that was the size of a house. It's still the size of a shed. And I think it'll be everywhere else it's gone, but I think it'll be here for the next six months. Um, we, when people came in this morning, they thought it was the salt for the, for the salt spreaders, but nah, -uh, it's snow. Um, the biggest snowman that you've ever, ever seen. Right, so first of all, I want to talk about snowdrops. You need to pick your colours really carefully. So I've chosen two shades of green because we want this lovely vibrant yellowy green. So I've got pistachio and the other colour that I'm working with is leaf and then of course some white because we're going to need all of those. And I've got a few different brushes. In fact, I'm going to need another one. So I'm going to work with, we're going to work with... Uh, I've got a number eight flat. I've got a number 10 flat. I've also got a number 12 flat. I've got a 14 round and I've got a number two round. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the top of the snowdrops. I'm going to position it on my page to make sure I get the shape right. So we're going to do that by just pulling in a little bit of the pistachio and a little bit of the white onto this really fine number two round brush. And I'm not gonna blend it on my palette. I'm gonna go straight onto my work and really with the tip of the brush, just touching the page, I'm just going to, whoops, that's a wobbly shaky hand. I'm just gonna put in these little bits, which will be where the buds are gonna go. So we're just gonna put three little buds in. So a little bit more paint because we're running out just there and just going to go down and round. And they're the three places that my little buds are going to go. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a the flat brush and I'm going to use the number eight flat and I'm going to pick up the two greens and I'm going to load my brush as we would do normally. So I'm going to put a little bit of white where we would have that pistachio. So we'll put both of those colours. So we're keeping it nice and light on the edge because these are fresh, fresh leaves. And these are the ones that are going to come up here. And I'm just going to press down and just bring it up to the top. And then this one up here and press down and come up to the top there. Let's do, let's go over this one because it's a little bit light. Press and to the top. I think we need some glasses today to see what I'm doing. And then one more, and we're just gonna press down and go up to the top like that. So I've got these little snow drops started. And next, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna put in this part of the snow drop. And it's just that little bit that holds the snow drop together. Now I'm just using that as a placeholder at the moment because the little buds that go in, the, the petals, are the, are the key part of this. And this is going to be three quarter load of my white and a quarter load of pistachio. And then I'm going to just load that into my brush because we need this round brush to be really full. This time I'm going to just pick up the white. I'm trying to keep the white on the edge and the pistachio to the other side. I'm just going to pick up a tiny little bit more white on the edge and just that tiny little bit of pistachio is just going to give us the littlest bit of colour. And you can see it there, you've got mostly that white with a little tiny bit of the green 
and we're going to put in the back petal first. So for this, let me just turn my page so you can see better. I'm going to press down and I'm just going to pull that up there. And we're going to press down and I'm going to pull that one up there. And this one will press down and we'll pull it up just there. So they're the three, the start of the petals that we've got. I'm going to focus on the plain white this time. So without any pistachio on my brush, only the colour that's already in there. And then this one is going to go from the outside edge in like that. And then we're going to do the same on this side. So this one's overlapping that petal like that. So there's the start of our little snowdrops. If you would like these any smaller, remember what you do, you change down your brush size. That's what we always do. So I'm just going to go here is another one. And then I'm just going to go here with that one. And make sure you keep keeping that paint there. So you've got plenty of it up to there. And then a third one, which is there to here. So I've really made these sort of quite big, round, um, lovely snowdrops. Now, we need to do a bit, of, a bit more work. So first of all, snowdrops have sometimes have little stripes in this part of it up here. So you can pull that little bit down like that and you can literally just pull that into the puddle that we've created and do a little, a little side swipe, a little side swipe just there. But now we need to get in the stems and to do that, I'm gonna go back in to the greens, the two greens. You could pull just a tiny little bit of white in if you wanted to. So we'll keep those colours and the stem has got to come from here because this is where we need to build in that snowdrop. So I'm just going to build it in just there and again just there. So let's put that one back in once more, just a little bit thicker. Make it so that the stem's been there a little bit longer. And I'm just going to do the same on that one, get a bit more dimension to it. Then I'm changing up my brush size again. And this time I'm going to use a number 12. So I'm getting two, the two colours. Again, I'm using that lime green because it really, the pistachio really adds some freshness to these leaves. And that's the kind of thing that you want with your snowdrops. So you can see I've got lots of detail here. And then the leaves, well, we've seen these before. These are just the lovely, lovely leaves that we like doing. Now, snowdrop leaves are quite thin and can be quite sort of um, straggly, but I like mine fat because I like doing this brush stroke. So I'm just going to let myself be a little bit indulged by putting there, like you can see there. So there is our set of little snowdrops, which I hope you're loving. I'm just gonna put a little bit of greenery just coming through here. So, and then we'll put a tiniest little bit of snow on here to just finish off this design. So let's put there a tiny little bit of the white now. So I put white on this brush, just side loaded it. So I hope you're starting to get used to using more than two or three colors because we're getting quite generous with the number of shades that we're using in our work now. Just getting that extra little bit of color that we've got just there. And then I just need to reach a pair of scissors. So excuse me while I just do that because I'm going to make myself another one of those lovely scruffy brushes. So just um, a couple of thoughts for you. So tonight I have got a deal for you on white paint. It's also on our, um, oh gosh, our Aquastone, which, and then also the other one is on our Magic um, um, 
glass medium, sorry, and it's etching medium, it's etching medium, it makes it etched, so it makes an etched effect. So um, they're ones that for everybody who gets them, I'm going to show you what to do with them all next, next week um, or next time we're on together. But um, yeah, really a really great little deal on those. So look at, but look at what happens when you start to put the snow at the bottom. Look at how this just gives you that extra little bit of finishing. But then I'm going to go with a tiny little bit of snow on the top of my, my little flowers as if it, they're just literally are just speckled with snow. Put a little bit of it on here, a little bit up there and some along this bit of the, the leaves and maybe even a little bit of it just there and just there. So I put a little bit of snow amongst our snowdrops. Now we're not even 15 minutes in and already we've finished our first picture. Super, super quick and easy to do, but doesn't it look effective? And you can imagine these little snowdrops just in little clusters and putting them wherever you want to be able to create this lovely effect that we've got. Now, um, got asked about doing the tulip and the tulip needs a little bit more work to it. So I want to, I'm just gonna pop that to one side and I wanna show you what we're going to do with the tulip. And I need, do need to add some new colours. So first of all, the very fine brush I had, that number two is going in some water. So is the number six and also let's put that number 12 in there as well because I don't need any of those. Now, um, I know there are lots of people that would tell you, don't leave your paint brushes into wa in water. And I know I do it all the time and it is a bit naughty, but um, it's, it's good to not be perfect all the time, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> right, so just putting out a little bit of red. Now, this is um, candy, apple candy. Love this color for tulips. When your bottles start to get a little bit lower, um, what I tend to do is turn them upside down like this. A, I can then still see what's left up here, but give them a good shake before you put them on the lid. And then when you open the lid, make sure that you turn it back that way so that anything has been collecting in the lid actually falls back into the bottle. It will still come out rel relatively easily, but just keep it so that you've got them, the colors separated. And then I've got my yellow just there. Right now, I've done yellow, I've done tulips on painting pages before, but I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways of doing them. So first of all, we're going into these two shades of green. So we're going to be using both of those. So I'm using the um, pistachio and the dark green. And let's just talk about what's going on on this palette because it's starting to look a bit messy here. And if you look, you can see the dark green on the edge of my, of the leaf green on the edge of my brush. So I've already lost that blending that I wanted where I was gonna keep the colors separate. And part of that is because I didn't pull the paint all the way down the brush itself, which I have now done. So I've pulled those paints down and I've got that so that it's all starting to come together and it's all nice and nice and neat now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my tulip right down the middle of this page. So clearly didn't load the brush well enough because I've lost my color as I've come down. But what you can do then is you can go this other way and go up to meet where you ran out of paint and you will find that this is the biggest cheat going if you are doing something where you need it to really stand out. So I'm now happy that I've got that working. I'm gonna save putting the leaves on until the end, but what I am gonna do is I'm just gonna pull up that little bit there to make it so that it is fairly level. I'm just bring that color down so it's blended. So I've got my stem, quite straight, lovely for our tulip to start with. 
And um, I was really fortunate because I had quite a big birthday recently and I had so many flowers sent to me, I can't tell you. And it was lovely because I had tulips, I had roses, I had um, carnations, I had lilies, literally all of them. And I took photographs so that I could use them to be able to paint. And it was, I thought, what a nice way of being able to remember the year by. So I'm now going to use this. I'm coming up quite high. So I'm what, one, two, three, I'm going to be about four centimetres up. And I've got a round brush and I'm just splaying the bristles and I'm going to pull that brush down to there. So I've got that lovely round shape and look at my brush, used all the paint off from one side. Now on this side, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm actually using the edge of the brush to splay out. So I'm coming out to that side. I think I want this a little bit wider, so I'm going to come back in, reload my palette. I'm just taking the tiniest little bit of white to give me a third colour in my um, dimension. And I'm going to put it here and I'm going to splay it out there. So I'm just going to come round like that. And then I'm going to do another one on this side. So I'm going to splay it out and pull that down to the bottom like that. And then we're going to come out from the side and come round to there. And then once more with the red and those yellows, get the colours so that they're all beautifully um, included. And then this one is going to go over the top. So it's important you can see the different colours there and come down and as you come down to the bottom you're just going to lift up so there's your tulip bud okay the next part of it we're going to bring in our um our colors for our green and we're going to do the same thing we're going to slide up really wide because those tulips have got very, very wide leads. And, and this brush is not going to allow me to do that. So I'm going to go into my brush palette and I'm going to change the size of my brush. That's what we would do at this point. I'm going to go straight into a number 20. So we'll pick up the green and the pistachio and the dark green. I can already feel how much more paint I can get on this brush. So giving me a lot more depth to the design. Tiniest little bit of white. Sometimes on some of the colours, because of the way that they're made, they don't, some colour pigments are not as strong as others. So if ever there's a pigment that I think could do with a little bit of help on black card, then I would just l take the smallest amount of white and just load that into the colour. So there's one of the leaves. Let's go again with the other one. And we'll go on the other side and this one is going to come up here and I'm coming right up so I'm letting the stem come out from there I'm coming up onto the edge and I'm just going to get a little turn on it just at the top like that right once all of this has started to dry I'm going to put another layer of petals on so I'm going to bring in another bit of the red and another bit of the yellow just going to pull that colour together. So I'm more of the yellow than I do of the red. Make sure it's not over, the brush isn't overloaded. And I'm just going to put in one more petal just there. So you've got that little highlight of the yellow just to the front of the petal, adding you that little bit of depth. And then one more just there. And that little bit of yellow just touching in at the top. So there we've got our tulips and our snowdrops, both of them together. Let me see how close I can get them for you. If I do it this way, it will be closer. So there we go. There's both of them together and they've taken us about 20 minutes to paint. So giving you a real nice um, little composition of different elements. So how about we put them both together and we build ourselves a bouquet. 
Right. Now, um, I think we've had a request for a magnolia. Um, right, okay, let me see. Um, the magnolia I need a picture of because I can't remember what they look like. So we'll see if we can do something about that. And well, the fabric, I just happen to have here already. <laughs> So we'll do the bouquet first, if that's okay with everybody. And then we'll go and we'll do the magnolia if Andrew can find me a picture, which I'm sure he can. So he's super clever like that. Okay, so let's go in and we'll put some stems in first of all. So we'll do a bouquet of those beautiful tulips. And so remember, the first thing we need to do is get some really nice straight stems. So, but with the graduation of color. So there's the first one, nowhere near enough paint on that. So let's go back up. And again, and once more. And if I was working with a slightly larger brush, this probably would hold enough paint for me to do this in one go. But because I've got a smaller brush, I'm just going to make, the, make myself do the work with the strokes that I need to do. So I'm just gonna go round, because you know you get tulips like leaning into each other or leaning away from each other. We'll just get them so that they're not all at the same height because it makes it so much nicer when you've got them at different heights. And let's put one more in. And I'm going to put that one, I think, where should I put it? I think I might put it here. So it's leaning right over there. So I've got quite a thick stem to work with. So they're the stems that I'm going to use. I'm going to, I'm just going to put one of the leaves in just to give me some positioning a little bit of guiding for where that's going to go and I'm going to start a little bit further down because I want to elongate this design a little bit and just give myself a bit more extra height to the design and then we're going to start off by putting on these um, tulips and I'm going to choose another color. So I'm going with a fuchsia shade. So the fuchsia and the cherry red are going to be two of my colors to start with. And we'll just pop those together. So this time, remember when we do the first, the first bud or first petal, you splay out the bristles and come down and pull that in. And we're just putting in that first foundation. Then, as I'm working, I do the same on this one. So there, splay out the bristles, come down and let that one come in. So that's the next one. And then this one, the same thing, splay out the bristles, push and come up there. So I'm repeating all of the petals, working on them all at once. And then this one, right down there, far deep down, and then pull up like that. So there, the, where my, my flowers are going to go. So I'm then going to layer these elements and let's start to get the next part of it. So again, I'm gonna push, come round and pull that back. I'm gonna turn over the brush and push, pull and come round and bring that back. Liking these colors, these are looking really, really vibrant. So then this one is gonna be a push, come round right to there. And on this side, so we need to go round and push and come up to there. So you can see how this is all starting to come together. I'm planning on doing a really big wall picture, which I think will be massive fun. 
and I also want to do it as um, a class for you guys as well. Could you imagine that would be great fun to do? Can you see how I kept this one a little bit smaller because it's sort of falling out? And then we'll come again with that orange and I've just picked up a tiny bit of the yellow on the red. I'm trying to make sure I keep it quite a decent way away from the purple because I don't want it to distort the color of the purple or that, that fuchsia shade. So there we can see there are our tulips, but now we need to go back and start putting these extra petals in. So I'm just gonna go and just get a tiniest little bit of the white on this one. So this one is gonna go here and I'm just gonna bring that in round. And I'm gonna take a tiniest little bit of white there and I hope that's not gonna be too much. Oh, it's quite a lot, but I think it will be okay if I just put some white in there. So I've got little bits of stripes and you've probably seen these tulips where you get sort of almost like, um, they've got like tiger stripes in them. They look beautiful. And they also, you can get them where they've got jaggedy tops as well, which is just exquisite. So each time I'm just turning this brush to maximize getting all the colors that are around on the brush itself. So now I'm needing to pull some white on, pull that red, pull that purple. Let's have a look and see how that's gonna work. Yeah, we're good here. So I'm gonna come round again. And we're just really, what you're doing here is you're making sure you've got those front petals to the design actually in there. So we've got the back ones, we need the front ones coming through. So we've got some nice depth to them. And we'll go with our purple again and our red. And there's still a tiniest bit of white in there, which I'm hoping I can pull through. Just about managed it that time. I want to do it again on this one. So, and the minutest little bit to get you to be, oh, there it comes there. I'm just gonna put that little tiny bit of it back in there. So you can see, so these ones are the, the tulips that are starting to fall open. These ones are the ones that are holding their shape a little. And then we're going to come into here and put in the, um, the leaves because that would be the thing that will finish this off and tie it all together. So let's get those colours in here. And I'm starting down the bottom because remember we extended the design by doing that. And I'm just going to come out here and just tease that past the top of there. And this one the same. So we'll come along here. So I'm using it almost as a way of thinning out the stem because I've got them quite thick in a couple of places. And this one here, just to there. And then finally, I think we can get away with one more. And with this last one, I would come across here and I would literally let that one just fall away round the side. So there's our bunch of tulips. And that little bit of white really lifting it, wherein this one, I use a little bit of yellow, but you can see I've chosen a slightly different shape, still very, very tulipy. Um, and then a couple of other little things that you can do if you want to add in a tiny bit more dimension. Just take your brush and literally just pull in some little strokes like that and then you need to just pull it together. So you touch and pull like that to get it to all come together and then make sure I've got not too much paint and then you get the side of it like that and just slide it in and I can do the same on this one. So it's just getting a little bit more texture in the design and a bit more detail. And then just once more there and then turn that and pull that in too. So I'm just gonna get that one a little bit more. There we go. So you add in a tiny bit more detail to it, but it, you end up with that lovely look and feel. This, I think, lends itself to wanting to put some baby's breath in. So. Um, or Queen Anne lace. So the way that we do that, first of all, you need quite a straight line. 
and then you want a straight liner off at least what two three maybe even more and off each one you do a couple of little straight lines you might have seen me do this recently it was something i did a couple of times last week so i've put my that little bit of shape there i'm just going to bring that stem in so that it has got somewhere to go and we'll do another one here and i'm just going to put it out there and i'm going to go out 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 and you can let them cross over that works really well but it also looks good if you keep it nice and clean and crisp so i've got those two pieces i'm going to go into my um, brush so get that nice and dry pick up some of that white and what should we have with it a little tiny bit of the lime green always two colors otherwise it just looks clumpy so that little bit there so you can see how i'm picking it up so it's on the end of where i had those little stems go so just so that it looks like it's meant to be there and then a little bit here a bit more of the white Oops, quite, quite full just there, but that's okay. Just bring that bit down a little bit more there. There we go. And then finally, just to finish it off on this part. Oh, whoops, where's all that red coming from? Oh, that's me. A um, little bit of the paint. And I'm just going to literally, let's get this. So I've got this really good. So I'm just going to literally do a couple of little stems off there so that it looks like it's meant to be there. There we go. So there's our little bit of white to finish off our design. Right. Oh, I said I'd put, do both, didn't I? I? need to put some snowdrops in. I got completely carried away by doing some tulips. Let me just get this off this table so nobody knows it was me. So that won't take a second. I guess they might work it out because it's all over my arm. Oh, oh, so I'll just get rid of that. Sorry, I thought you were looking at the picture. <laughs> right, so we need to go back into our snowdrops. So remember, we need our super fine brushes. So we'll need that lovely little thin one. So into the white and into the green to get ourselves a nice, fine little nib so that's going to be the top of our snowdrop and we'll put uh, we'll put one there so it can go on top of the leaves so let's pull that round so you can see where it's going to go there and we'll have another one just there so we've got three little snowdrops then we use our little flat brush to pull in the top of the snowdrop. I think this might be called the calyx, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm sure one of you out there will know exactly what it's called, but it's where the snowdrop keeps its little seeds. So just there, and just there, and just there. Then remember we need the bit that comes off the top of the, um, the top of the snowdrop it's the little bit that allows the the flower bud to just be released just like that now to get some differentiation between these greens i'm going to use the dark green and the white and i'm dropped out that um that pistachio so i'm just going to use the this color to just bring me down there because then you can see I've got a little bit of differentiation and you can see it coming out so I'm just going to come that way there and this one well we'll get this one to just go behind like that okay so there's where our little snowdrops are going now we need to put our little petals on so I'm just going to clean down my brush and I'm going to use the white one, white for this. So let's take the white, get some nice white on there, a little tiny bit of the green, which I've got. 
and a bit more, a bit more. So petals, remember, we put one at the back, so down deep and pull up like that. And picking up a tiny little bit of the pistachio. Then this one down deep and pull up. Again, keep that brush loaded well because it's important. Down deep and pull up. So there's our little snowdrop. And then, and you do, you know, you do um, get so that the more you paint, the more enjoyable it becomes because you just sort of relax into it. You lose having that frustration of the strokes not being quite right. I'm not saying that you'll never paint a bad stroke because it happen, It does happen all the time. I mean, I do it you know, regularly, but what you will do is the bad strokes become less and less and you just get into, I'm just gonna come down a little bit lower for this one. You just get into the habit of just painting and thoroughly just enjoying as the picture comes together. And don't forget the other thing about this as well, which is lovely, is it is just paper. So if it goes wrong, you know, all you need to do is use a little bit of, um, well, get just get another piece of paper. So there we go. I'm just going to get, so I'm going to use a tiny little bit of the white um, pistachio, side load that dark green. Let's see what this looks like. Just, oh, that's a bit heavy. Just to put that little bit in here. It's going to catch the bottom of those petals there. And then, what should we go? Dark green and white for the leaves, I think. And I'm just going to come up like that. And I've only brought, or I haven't got a different shade of green that's going to make a big enough change. I think I like it, the fact I've got a little bit of white on there. Make sure you keep, try and keep your colour so that you have got some variation in it. And there, and then on this one, just there, perhaps even just there. So there you are, there's our little flowers together in a little clump. Um, super quick and easy and gives you the option to be able to play with them and put lots of designs in there. That would be a great one for Mother's Day, wouldn't it? Right, now, Andrew has found me a magnolia and what a magnificent magnolia that is, wow. So here we go, so we're looking at something that's got that lovely fuchsia on its petals and then lots of buds. Now, um, perhaps look at more than one when you're looking at them. That one's a much more open. Uh, I think the other one would be better for us to work from. Now, um, really could do with some brown. And I don't have any brown here, so I'm going to make it. So we'll start off and we'll make some brown using a dark green and a red. So I've got the green that I was working with before. And I've got um, my cherry red, and I'm just gonna use them to get this to be a sort of a darkish, bra as brownie as I can. If I'd got a blue, I'd put a tiny little bit of blue in this, but that's quite a nice brown. That's gonna be quite this, the bit in the middle where it's nicely mixed. That's actually quite a nice color. So I think that's gonna work really well. So. The first thing, and I am going to be improvising a little bit with the look and feel of this, but I still think we'll get a great result. So let's have a look at what we can do. Now, while I'm painting this, I'm going to ask Andrew to let me just have one more look at that photograph so that we can see where um, we're going to put these petals. But you'll see that the, that brown has come out really nice. So I'm going to come on here. And I'm just going to put the stem in here and come round and up like that. So I'm getting a little bit more of the brown. I think it needs to be more brown than white. And remember, there's no such thing as um, a mistake because we can always go over it. So I'm going to go over that and get that. That looks much nicer, doesn't it? 
and it's a warmer colour as well. And I'm also just going to come round there and I'm going to look at putting, maybe putting two magnolias on here. Now, the colour of the magnolia itself, it's, um, this is where, you know, you've got that really beautiful, vibrant purple, and then you've got the that lovely fuchsia, and then the white at the tip. So I'm going to change the way I brush loan. Let's see whether this is how successful we can be. So I'm, I'm first of all, I've completely loaded my brush with the fuchsia. So I've really pushed that paint into the um, bristles of the brush and I quite like the result I've got there. And then I'm giving myself some fresh white paint because I want this to be really clean on the edge. And I'm, so I'm tip loading the top of the brush. So you can see that's what, that's what we're actually going to be doing. And so I'm just gonna put that down and I'm now gonna pull that in to the brush like that. Okay, let's take a little look. Everybody have a look at the picture, if that's possible. So you can see there, you can see how I've managed to get those stripes all the, coming all the way through. So now the challenge here is gonna be making sure that we don't get this brush muddy. So I'm gonna pull in the fuchsia on one side of the brush, and I'm then gonna tip load again on the other side. And I'm just gonna come out right out here and I'm splaying the bristles and I'm pulling those back in and I'm gonna come right into the side like that. And then we'll do the same over here and bring that in. And then back into the pinks, into that fuchsia. So I've completely covered my brush again so you can see, and then I'm tip loading back into the white. So <laughs> Andrew, Andrew's, ch Andrew's chasing my paintbrush around and I'm going all over the place. <laughs> now this leaf, this petal, I'm gonna go right down there, splay it, and I'm gonna come in round that shape. And then this one, I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna pull it up to there. And we're going to go back into that fuchsia, tip load again. And this one will go here, like that. And I think we need one more that needs to go here. And that one's going to come to there like that. So I've started to get the shape. Now I think I'm going to need to work on this a little bit more for you to get, and I need to work on a bit more detail of what the um, the flowers look like. And to be to be fair, you know, have maybe having two or three pictures, looking at them from different angles because you do get to see different effects. But I think what we are seeing here is we've got the colours coming out. Right, there's a, there's a lovely bit of um, shape that I think we could pull into the petal there. And I think I'd like to see how they sort of join onto the branches. I'm gonna be guessing that bit in a minute unless Andrew can find something that would show us. So mm, I don't feel like it's wide enough. Let's go here, let's see whether we can get this to be a little bit wider. So I'm feeling like it's starting to look a little bit too pink, but we'll just go with it for now. And I promise that I will have another look at the flowers. I think I'm happier with that. It looks more, the color looks better than um, it did. So, um, and then I'm gonna go back into these browns because I've got a feeling I need to, I need to do something to attach this to the branch because it really, it's looking like it's sort of floating, not really where it should be. So if I were to get some more of that brown and just maybe just do a little twist here 
to try and just capture it in. Oh, not happy with that. So I think it needs to go the other way. So I'm going to go that way. And then come that way. So that looks, I think, good. And I wonder what the leaves look like. Okay, so, um, oh, interesting. They've got little burrs on them. I think they could be little buds. So let's look at how we could put those on. So you could just touch it and pull back. Let's just try that, touch and pull back. That's quite a good way of doing it. Touch, pull back, and then come back down here. So you've got these like little burrs coming in there. And they also then have little tiny branches that just have a little bit of detail at the top of them. Just a tiny little bit. And maybe even if I came with one just here and did a little bit there too. So I think we need to, there's a little bit more work to do on it. But overall, I think with the way that we've got the whites in there, I don't know whether Andrew can bring us back the original picture. We can just have a quick look at it. And you can see there literally wants to be full, doesn't it, of all of these flowers and petals to give us the, the background. And you, you feel like we need another white one at the background and maybe even another white one at the bottom. But there's a start for you. Um, and I'll work on this so that next time we do it, we can, I can give you a few more ideas. Um, we've got time to just quickly show you something um, working on fabric. So I've got my Academy apron on. And um, just to let everybody know, this week we will be releasing a lot more Academy dates. So things like painting. Uh, I've got uh, painting... In fact, at the weekend, I've got another two painting classes, but they are closed off now. Um, oh, no, no, I beg your pardon. I'm wrong. We've got a retreat in Doncaster this week. The painting classes, I think, is a couple of weeks later. But they are actually... Oh, no, they're not closed off. They're still open. Oh, forget that. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, Andrew, this is a rehearsal, isn't it? Can you stop recording? We start again. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work, does it? <laughs> right, I'm just going to put this little bit of pink over the top of this leaf that's on here. And the reason that I want to do that was because when I did it, um, I didn't have enough paint on my brush and I felt like I lost the, the leaf. And look at the difference that it's made. So when you are painting on your fabric, I've got a denim here that as it's not been washed or anything. So first of all, you must make sure you get plenty of paint on your brush because that's the thing that stops us being able to paint well. So lots of paint on your brush and slow strokes. So first of all, look at how I'm loading it on my apron. I'm not... I can see there, I'm literally, I'm loading it as I go. Um, those classes, by the way, are here at Highlight Crafts. And it's Saturday the 15th and Sunday the 16th of April. And there are still um, places available for those. And, and then the other thing that we've got is we've got, um, we're going to be announcing all of David's classes because David's doing lots of um, cadence shows and we're doing makeovers and we've had just had a load of new blanks delivered, which is so super exciting. And if you're coming to the NEC, we're taking them with us to the NEC. So that's going to be even more exciting. So, and now I'm just rambling. So look at how much slower I'm painting than I do when I'm using, um, when I'm not. And you can see what's happened there is I haven't blended my paint. I've just picked up on either side. So I'm left with a gap in the middle. So I, you do need to go back every now and again and still blend on your palette because you will end up there. You'll get that better finish that you've got there. Look at that one, that's so much better. So it is a little bit, um, 
broken on the edges, but I'm, I'm working on a very coarse denim. So, you know, you can get a smoother result with this if you're working on a softer fabric. So I'm just gonna go once more. So I'm only working with my cadence fabric. So I'm just gonna go and put this bud in up here. And it takes so little time to dry. I'll, um, for next the next couple of weeks, when we do this again, I will bring out some different fabrics and show you some different fabrics. I'm gonna be working with some lovely people tomorrow painting on leather. And I know we're gonna get some stunning results. So I will make sure that I share all that with you because I don't want you to miss out. Um, so we've just been asked about wheelchair accessibility. Um, we can accommodate wheelchairs when we know which classes it is that you would like to do. Our main classroom is upstairs, but we've got a smaller classroom downstairs, which we can literally use while we're waiting for three more classrooms to be finished. So if somebody in particular is interested in a particular class, if you email us which one it is you're interested in with a little note that you asked in this class, we will um, move the classroom, we'll use the classroom downstairs for that one. So that'll, that then gives you an idea. There you go. Look at how pretty that is. So I'm now going to, if you keep asking me to paint on fabric, I'll probably get this apron finished by about 2030. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to put some little flat leaves in here. Let's put those in. Look at that. Just gorgeous. And I think I need to do this one because it does want that extra little bit of the fuchsia paint on it. And even though I'm just going to let that paint fade away and add that in just there. How pretty is that? Just so super, super gorgeous. So um, that's working with it, working on fabrics. Do layer it up. I have in the past, I've put a little foundation down, background color. I'll do a bigger section on this for you when I've got different fabrics. And extender on fabric does make it flow a little bit better, but I don't have any of that with me at the moment, so I can't show you it, but I promise what I will do is I will get some fabrics and we'll do a full session on that for you. I'm just going to move this out the way because I want to show you a product that we have got and it's the Aquastone varnish. And the reason that I want to share this with you is because not only does it give you a beautiful glossy finish, but it makes paper waterproof. I know, it's almost incredible to believe. I had this on Create and Craft and I stole a lot of other people's orders, but I didn't steal Diane's because it's more than my life was worth. And so what I've got here, look at this, look at the difference it makes in color. It's just wow. But more importantly than that, when this is dry, if I put water on it, it will just roll off. It just gives you this beautiful, gloss, fabulous, bright, sealed surface that is perfect. So to give you a bargain tonight, Diana's put together a little bundle that's got the white, the Aquastone varnish, and also the glass etching medium, which we'll be using next time. And it should be £28.47, but it's £21 for uh, 13 for if you're a club member. So lots of reasons to be club members. So it only takes moments to dry. And then it's not even dry yet, but if I put that water on, did you hear it just splashing? Okay, and look what happens when I tip it off. It just rolls off, and that's before it's even dry. It's just so clever. Wow. <laughs> Andrew just said I'm super impatient. I am, I know I am. 
Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Short and sweet, as always. It's such a pleasure to have your company. Keep the requests coming in. Anything else you'd like to see? So we are going to be at the NEC Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I am going to be at the NEC Thursday, Friday, and then I'm going to be at a Doncaster retreat on Saturday, Sunday. Next week, we have got, um, gosh, we've got all sorts of stuff going on. So don't forget to tune in at Highlight Crafts, find us on there and follow us to see what we're up to. But so much more to do and so many exciting things happening. We hope you can join us. Thank you for your company tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. Take care, everyone. Good night. God bless. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you subscribe by clicking the button below. Then click the bell icon to receive notifications for all our new content.